Welcome in Cool Paradigms. Milk kefir is produced by adding milk kefir grains into some organic milk at room temperature between 12 and 48 hours. Many sorts of milk can be used. So in Western countries, it's mainly cow, sheep or goat milk. And just a little spoon of kefir grains can ferment a few cups of milk. Kefir grain belongs to a category of edible scoby. Standing for symbiotic colonies of bacteria and yeasts. The grains are very tough and their existence implies the collaboration of many different strains of bacteria and yeasts, guaranteeing a wide variety of probiotic microorganisms. Very useful to get our own microbiote into a good balance. Domestication of the enigmatic wild kefir grains goes back millenaries ago among pastoral societies in the Caucasus mountains and in Tibet. They help and still help today to keep milk and many different sub products eatable a long time without refrigeration. The different operations for the preparation of a full batch of kefir are explained here a little bit out of synchronization. Namely, number one, sterilization of the sieve with boiling water. Number two, presentation of the glass jar with its lid optimized to let just a little bit of air inside. Number three, shaking energetically the jar to make the extraction of kefir grain easier. Number four, extraction of the grains just by shaking the sieve without touching the grains. Number five, putting the grains back in the empty jar to be rinsed with some milk at room temperature. Number six, a second use of the sieve to clean the grains with some milk. By the way, cleaning the grain with milk favorizes bacteria and yeast directly from the grains instead of those in what's left of the kefir itself. In the same logic, we can't make a real milk kefir with just some previous kefir. It would quickly degenerate with just a few strains of microorganisms dominating the whole mixture. Because when they are not forced to collaborate for the survival of the grains, they just get into straight competition and only those who multiply the fastest dominate. Number seven, putting the grains back in the jar with enough milk warm at room temperature. Be careful, always remove the label from the milk jug when making a water bath to reach room temperature because some water polluted by the label could end up inside your kefir. Not a good idea. And now a few generalities. The taste of kefir changes greatly depending on how long it's fermenting, for the longer the more acidic it becomes. It's also possible to reuse the same glass jar for many batches in a row. So at the end of the process, a cheese after test is likely to, to be present. Not everybody cup of tea. Warning, when we change the jar, it's a good idea to sterilize it with boiling water and avoid detergent traces at all costs. After a few successful batches, you'll have too many grains, so you can share them, eat them, or just throw them away into your compost. Thank you for your attention.